Because the moment we say God, you immediately go into this common sense we have today that God is, is a human being in a cloud, floating some, somewhere over there, watching everybody, you know, and, you know, you meet with a, with a, with a, a how do you say, a, a, how do you say, a king? Okay. Mm. Huh? King. A king. With a king watching everybody, and misbehave, hit you in the head, and that kind of stuff. You know, this is the image that Christian don't has of, with the word God. He said, He's a really human being, usually a European man, he's a white man, okay, with a year, old age, in a, in a cloud, floating somewhere in a cloud, watching everybody, you know, that kind of stuff, you know? So that's nothing to do with the notion of Allah. It's a cosmological notion. So what this means is that Allah is beyond, nobody is Allah. Nobody is Allah. Nobody is sacred with the capital S. Okay? And whoever claims that is falling into the problem of idolatry. Because you're taking, you're taking yourself or a political entity or anything else as a replacement of that force. So I prefer to translate the concept of Allah differently. I prefer not to use the term God. When we say God, we merely fall into this trap of the, the Christian concept, you know, that we have today after being lost in translation for so many, you know, for thousands of years now. You know? uh, and I prefer to translate it as, you know, the notion is like it's a divine force, creative of life with intelligence. I prefer to translate this way than say God. Because the moment you say God in more in the common sense, especially today uh, with you know in the West especially you get this idea of the West understood in a, in a broader sense than just Europe or USA. Because the West is everywhere today after five hundred years of European colonization of the world. So the West is inside everybody here. Nobody can say I'm outside the West. Okay? We are all in the West. And you don't have, including in other traditions, among indigenous traditions, colonized versions of their own sacred traditions. Because you've been colonized by, you know, Western Christian powers, and that, those things are not just left out there, they, they begin to colonize uh, the self, the mind, the heart, etc. When you open your heart, you open your eyes, you're already colonized. Yeah, and after so many centuries, we're all inside the West. There's nobody outside the West today. It doesn't matter us which tradition you're coming from. Even if you're not Christian, you're still inside the West. You will still think with the categories, structures, etc. of the West in many ways. Okay? And those structures have colonized different traditions, including indigenous traditions, or including Islam, or including whatever. Okay? Today we are we have this problem. So part of decolonization is not just to identify the power structures out there that are affecting our lives today and oppressing people, okay? but it's also identifying our inner structures that are also part of the government project. That's the, diff that's the most difficult, I would say. It's easy to say, oh, in big this and this and that, it's more easy to identify the structures of power of the world today, you know, how they are exploiting people, destroying life in the planet, how they are, that's easy to, to identify, even though many people have resisted to, to recognize this, but it's more easy to discuss that and acknowledge that the system we're in is destroying life in the planet. That I don't think, except Donald Trump, you know, will, will, will say no to this. You know? uh, or, you know, that uh, this system we live today is creating hunger in many parts of the world, you know, and human beings are being, are dying, you know, and, you know, so all this in a while, 12%, 12, not 12%, 12 persons today have the world of 57% of the world population, 12 persons, 
mean, these inequalities are huge, you know, where there's, you cannot deny that they're just there as in the statistics and information for you to, to, to get. So there's something wrong happening when you have 12 people, you know, uh, being, having more wealth than 57% of the world population. That's amazing. You know? and, and so, anyway, so that you can identify. What is more difficult to identify in the colonial projects is our inner structures. How our inner structure have been messed up by that same system. And so even if you claim you're outside the West in your spiritual tradition or epistemic tradition, you're still there. You need to check this out carefully because we've been born for so many centuries by modern project of the West that in many ways uh, we cannot reproduce many things uh, in the name of authentic whatever. Okay? So we need to be careful and look at this critically. And how is it that the, you know, the colonial project affected the different traditions of the world? Okay? So these are things we need to, to look at. But the point is, coming back to this definition of uh, Allah being a divine force that creates life with intelligence, okay? is a, a, an important notion that immediately got, uh, got Jesus in trouble. Uh, because basically he was saying, listen, we're all created by this force, but nobody is that force. When he said that, he got in trouble. I don't know if you get the point, but if you have an empire, such as the Roman Empire, that pretends to be sacred, you see, and pretends to be sacralized, you see, and pretends to be beyond uh, any human mistake, okay? And then, of course, someone saying that immediately is questioning the power structures and the power authorities and saying nobody is here equivalent to that force, therefore nobody is sacred. We are in the, the capitalist, where sacred is more or less, and therefore we got mistakes and, and therefore the condition of the credit is there. So we have to criticize the Roman Empire. That will put you into political trouble because you are demystifying a, a power structure that pretends to be godlike or pretends to be sacred and be beyond any kind of human critique, but at the same time, uh, you will know that it's human creation, therefore it's not perfect, and if, if it's not perfect, then it should be submitted to critique. That's why a lot of the prophetic tradition ended up having political problems, because they were all calling attention to this notion of shirk, idolatry. What I mean by that is, if you look at all the prophets, they were all getting into trouble with political authorities because of this question. Okay? They were all persecuted. They were all uh, going through trouble because of this question. Because they were putting in question. See, a lot of the, a lot of time we think of idolatry as if it was, oh, these people are praying to a tree or to a stone or what, and then we depoliticize it. In fact, in all these traditions, the 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 emphasis is not so much that people are praying to a tree or something like that. It's more than that. It's more profound because it's about putting in question terrestrial political authorities and saying you're not Allah. You are just another human being, sacred with capital S, but therefore you are not perfect, therefore you should be submitted to critique to. Otherwise, if I take that political structure, the pharaohs, no? the pharaohs, or later the Roman Empire, etc., and, and sacralize it, and then I'm falling into shit. I'm falling into the other. So part of the issue is doing a critique to those power structures, okay, and that's where the prophets enter in trouble immediately, okay? Because they are calling attention that hey, you're not sacred, you're not godlike, you're not you know, do not Allah, Allah is beyond, and therefore you could be submitted to critique. 
Okay? So this idea of unity with diversity became a revolutionary idea. Okay? Because it was putting in question the powers that be at the moment. Okay? So what happened was that after four centuries of this, the, the Christian movement became a very, very popular mass movement, anti-imperialist movement, okay, against the Roman Empire. And the Roman Empire was seeing this movement as a threat, okay, because this movement was basically decentralizing their structures of power and authority. Okay? So in the fourth century, fourth century after Jesus, you have there, in the fourth century, uh, you have there uh, Conf uh, Constantine, the emperor. Okay? And at that moment, there was a, di a discussion about what to do with this movement. Okay? And basically, I was challenging them. So basically, uh, the response of the Roman Empire was if you cannot beat them, join them. That's the moment when the Roman Empire decided to be Christian and said to all this movement that were challenging the power, say, hey, don't, don't attack me, I'm Christian like you, you know, and, you know, and try. So the attempt was to recentralize the Roman Empire again in the eyes of the people by becoming Christians. Okay? And then selling the idea to this, the, you know, mass movement for the Christian that, hey, come down where I'm a Christian like you, so don't, don't, you don't have to fight me, right? But then, in the process of becoming Christian, they have to then change the cosmology. You cannot say, uh, you know, if you want to recentralize the Roman Empire, you you cannot keep the, the, the cosmology of Allah, of unity with diversity, because then you won't be able to specialize, because then you will say, okay, uh, nobody here is, is uh, you know, like Allah, nobody here is sacred, I am an emperor, I have, I have my, uh, how can I say, my, my uh, mistakes and my, Problem, so I'm not going to predict. <laughs> That's not it. So you, you have to change the theory. You have to change the cosmology. That's when the Christian turned in from Unitarian Christianity, this notion of unity with diversity, to Trinitarian Christianity. That's the transition in the fourth century. And they decide now that the new cosmology is Trinitarian Christianity. And Trinitarian Christianity is a completely different kind of understanding of a, 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 a completely different understanding because Trinitarian Christianity is going to say, basically it's going to destroy the notion of unity with diversity and it's going to bring a dualistic notion. Okay? First, he's going to say that Jesus is the Son of God. Okay, that's the first move. You know, and then place Jesus as Son of God on earth. Okay, and then create a dualism, or let's put it with an analogy. The same way that, that God brought to earth his Son, the same way the Emperor is the representative of God on earth. This is the analogy that is put forward. So remember, they're trying to resacralize the Roman Empire when it was desacralized by the Christian movement. So why they, they cannot just convert to Christian, they need to twist and change the theology and the cosmology to be able to resacralize. You get the point? So that's when they bring Trinitarian Christianity and destroy the Unitarian Christianity and persecute the Unitarian Christians. There was persecution, there were massacres of the Unitarian Christians uh, by the church that now turned 
into an empire, they turn this into Trinitarian Christianity. And Trinitarian Christianity creates a dualism. The dualism is basically the following. We, the empire, we are the good guys. Anything different, anything that will question us, will push them to the side of difference. Outside the, the outside of the goods. So it created dualism between the goods and the box. And now the notion of unity with difference is going to be transformed or uni unity with homogeneity. And any, anything different is going to be expelled outside that unity with homogeneity. So now you don't have any more unity with heterogeneity. What you have is a dualism of you know, the spiritual forces and anything that is not part of that unity with homogeneity. And the spiritual forces is the buyer, you know, the followers, etc. And anything that is going to question or different is going to be put on the side of difference. And now you have a you know unity with homogeneity. And anybody who is different to the homogeneity is part of what? Of evil. They are evil forces. Okay? Evil forces at the time means that you people crucify. That was the method used by the Roman Empire at the time. They would crucify you because you're part of evils. So you create a dualism with the, the, the good spiritual forces who are homogeneous. And then all the difference that was before in the notion of uh, Allah, you know, of unity with difference, is going to be now pushed to the side of evil. So, women suspicious of being evil, pushed to the side of evil, for example. No? Or critical thinkers or philosophers or scientists that will question the dogmas, side of evil. You're playing with evil force. And so they will then crucify you. And so this dualism is important to understand because uh, it's going to create a form of political authority that is going to be a, that we have to understand because this is the transformation of Christianity to Christian norm. Christian norm is now Christianity turning into a, an ideology of state domination. Okay? And so this is the we're now in Christian. Now what happened four centuries after Jesus. It didn't happen at the time of Jesus. It happened four centuries later. This transformation. In the early period, there was no such thing as Christ Trinitarian Christianity. It didn't exist. I was not what if you read the Aramean, the Aramean Bible, you know, you could see that there was no uh, uh, idea that Jesus would be the Son of God or all, all this notion that came later. They are not there, are not there. And, and so the, so what happened was that the, the Roman Empire was in the, you know, they tried to rebuild the empire. So you remember that Constantine moved to, 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 to um, uh, you know, Istanbul, okay? That's what it's called today. Istanbul, but at the time, uh, was uh, Constantinople. And so you have to move the empire over there, the center of the empire, but the, the Vatican, all these structures that stay on the west side, they continue this Christian kind of ideology. And uh, when the empire basically fell, then you have this period in Europe called feudalism, that what is feudalism? It's the fragmentation of the Roman Empire in different pieces, where now each little Feudal law is, is the new emperor in this little corner. Okay? And now you have many little emperors. But they're going to all think of themselves as the representative of God on earth and centralize their little power and their little, little feuds, you know, in the feudal, uh, into similar structures of political authority like I've been describing. So what happened with this is that first, no possibility of science. If you were doing science and you would be discovering things that go against the, the, the dogmas of the time, they would 
they would crucify their own empire, later they would burn you alive. The, the fear 